It's been three years since Rocket League was released, and it seems like we've established a really nice, solid player base of committed players. But, uh, you'd be surprised how many misconceptions and myths are out there about Rocket League. Pretty much rampant throughout the player base. Trust me, I see them every day in my comments and other people's comments on YouTube. Uh, not to mention Discord and Reddit and Twitter. Pretty much everywhere where people talk about Rocket League, there's someone that gets something wrong about it. Now to be fair, some of this is, is because of changes that Rocket League has made. So some of the misinformation is simply based on things that used to be true and just aren't true anymore. And some of the misconceptions, anecdotal evidence, or things that appear to be one way but with a closer look are found to be simply not true. And then there's of course the people that just don't read or retain information. And uh, I see you guys. I understand how you operate. You're the guy in the class that everyone has to explain things to. And that's totally fine. I'm pretty slow myself. And that's why I made this video of 10 things that people still get wrong about Rocket League. Let's start with number one. <laughs> Obviously. The Octane Turn Radius. This one I just discovered because I just did a video on why the Octane is better than the Dominus, which uh, is <clears throat> very serious. And I was going to use this point that the Octane actually has a tighter turn radius than the Dominus. Well, it turns out the Octane actually has one of the worst turning radiuses in the game. Radiuses? Radii? Radii. I think back in the old days, the Octane might have had tighter turning. I can't remember for sure, but we do know now that it definitely has one of the worst turning radiuses. God damn it, radii. So I couldn't use that in my video about the pros of using an Octane. But despite that, in the video, I saw a comment where someone uh, said, well, the Octane has a way tighter turn radius. And so uh, that definitely is not true. And you can check out all these stats from Halfway Dead at Rocket Science. He's done all the science behind this. So you can check out everything from length, girth, of course, uh, turn radius, height, all that stuff is available on the spreadsheet that I've linked in the description. Definitely check that out. The next misconception is how MMR in parties works. A lot of you know this by now, but there's still quite a few people that don't. So back in the old days, it used to be easier to rank up with a party made up of people of different ranks. But because of complaints about boosting, Psyonix changed how many points you received. I'm not gonna get into the details, but essentially it's harder than ever to get boosted. Check out this post from Yitzi13 if you want a detailed description of how MMR and the ranking system works. So every time you hear someone say, oh, this person got boosted, this person got boosted, it's most likely false because boosting has been nerfed out of existence to an annoying level. So yeah, you can get carried by your friends a little bit, but there's only so far they can really take you. The reality is most people are in the rank they belong and the boosted effect is just not as strong as people think. In fact, I would rather have boosters run rampant and be able to have a fun experience when I'm playing with my friends who are other ranks, uh, to be honest, but that's how it is for now. Speaking of MMR, a lot of people actually don't even know you can look up your MMR. So you might have heard that last point and you're like, uh, I don't even know about this system that you're even talking about. And pretty much every time I mention MMR, people ask in the comments how to look that up. So you can look up your MMR on a website that I've linked in the description, rocketleague.tracker.network. There's a couple other ones, but that one's my favorite. And there you can see what your MMR is, which is represented by a, a number. And you can see what number you need to reach in order to get to the next rank. So there you go. One more thing that people now know about Rocket League. Number four, never getting anything good in crates. There's sort of a lot of uh, conjecture and misconceptions around how likely it is that you get a valuable item in a crate. A lot of people say, oh, I always get this, oh, I always get that. Well, thankfully, Psyonix just released the exact odds of getting certain types of items in crates. So now there's no more need for, uh, you know, believing you just have bad luck or this person has amazing luck. It really just boils down to how likely Psyonix has made it for you to get that item personal opinion, but there's no such thing as, as luck when it comes to gambling. Uh, it's just you against the odds. So I have the Reddit post in the description if you want to see the odds, but I warn you, it might make you never want to open a crate again, because for a black market item, it's like one in a hundred. But anyway, moving on to number five, hitbox misinformation. So like I said before, a lot of this confusion came from the way the hitboxes used to work. A lot of you now know that 
Hitboxes are standardized. They're basically organized in groups. Every car that's in that group of hitboxes acts exactly the same. But that doesn't mean the visual appearance of cars are the same. In other words, I prefer the Octane because it matches the hitbox in my mind. It makes sense to me. Whereas other cars, because of this standardization change, now don't really fit the hitbox at all. For instance, the Dominus, its nose sticks way past the hitbox. Like you can't actually hit the ball that far out. And certain cars are much shorter than their hitbox, which doesn't really make sense, but it's an effect of making every car fit inside a hitbox category. So quite a few people are still confused by that. And once again, I recommend Rocket Science. His channel is super interesting and you should definitely check it out if you're interested in that sort of thing, because he's really the community authority on technical details in Rocket League. Number six. Fix your servers. So this is an interesting one. I know I've seen quite a bit of complaints. I think we all have about how bad the server performance in Rocket League can be. And you may have noticed in the past, I haven't really complained about it that much because if I'm being honest, I haven't really experienced too many issues or at least not more than what I've experienced in any other online game. But I know it's still a problem for a lot of players in a lot of regions. But what I have learned over the years based on Psyonix's reaction to the community's complaints is it's really not as simple as just fixing your servers. The main misconception I see is why are they working on this crate? Why are they working on these cosmetics? Why aren't they working on their servers? When in reality, it's totally different developer teams. You're not gonna have your graphics engineers working on server issues. It doesn't really make sense for them to be twiddling their thumbs while this server team or whatever is doing everything they can do to try to improve performance. As far as what they're trying to do, I know the main thing they're doing now is expanding their ability to monitor and diagnose servers. Once they have that data, it allows them to explore more options about what to do in the future. So before they were kind of just in the dark and they couldn't really take action because they didn't have the diagnostic information. So now they're working on getting that and hopefully across the board, servers will improve. We'll see about that. Number seven is the YouTuber effect. Now, of course, I'm a little biased because I have been known to upload my gameplay. But there's definitely like a weird misconception within the community when they're watching gameplay. Now, if any of you guys have seen this video from Johnny Boy, uh, is John Sandman Boosted, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's the effect where you're watching gameplay and it seems lower level than it should. What this comes from is up for debate. I think it comes from watching a lot of pro gameplay. Speaking of which, let's do that instead of watching my gameplay. But anyway, there's certain expectations when you watch someone that's much lower than a pro, even if they're above your rank. But there's also just a general effect of watching gameplay being much different than actually playing. Try saving a replay and watching your own gameplay. Trust me, it, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> Everything just seems slower when you're watching gameplay. This leads players to sort of overestimate their own abilities when they're watching someone else's gameplay. Like, oh, I could have done that. Oh, I could have done that. And I totally understand that because when I watch a pro play, I feel the same effect. Like I feel like I can do what they're doing. Now, obviously when they do crazy stuff that I obviously can't do, I don't feel that way. But for most of the gameplay I'm watching and I'm going, yeah, I mean, I can do that. I can clear it like that. I can do that. But the truth is it's happening so much quicker than it looks. And when I play, I realize I'm, I play more like a drunk monkey. All this to say, it looks way easier every time. So be aware of that when you're watching someone play. What I'm trying to say is just stroke my ego and don't say anything bad about my gameplay, okay? Because I'm basically a god. <clears throat> Number eight has to do with rank distribution. Kind of relating to the last misconception, there's this idea that a platinum or a diamond player is sort of an average player, when in reality, most of the player base is gold or below. I think this also comes from exposure to pro gameplay, high level gameplay. People that are in the community online are advanced players because they're the ones that are seeking out communities to interact with. In other words, lower level players aren't as active in online communities like YouTube, Twitter, Reddit. So they're sort of underrepresented and you forget that really the average player is pretty bad. Not only that, it's really interesting looking at this chart made by Reddit user SolarJ where everyone submitted how many hours they had and what rank they were. It seems pretty accurate to me. I mean, I'm actually right on track, so that makes me feel good about myself. Kidding, I suck. And I see a lot of comments like, I have this many hours and I'm only a plat, when in reality, that might be really good. So it's kind of interesting to check that out. Of course, be aware if you're a casual player or you keep the game open for a long time, it's totally fine. You might have more hours than average for your rank, but it's still really interesting to look at. And maybe we'll clear up some of those misconceptions about rank and hours. So the ninth one has been discussed a lot, especially with the release and massive popularity of Fortnite. 
and that is Rocket League dying. This one is pretty easy for me to debunk. I mean, you can just look at the player base, you can look at the Steam charts, and to me, it seems really good for a three-year-old game. Games that become massively popular are always gonna have a bigger audience than Rocket League. That's, that's just kind of the way it is. But the thing that makes me confident in Rocket League is a Battle Royale game or a shooter game can always be replaced by another Battle Royale game and another shooter game. You know, they're existing in a genre. Where Rocket League is truly original, I can't think of another game that comes even close to it. I actually have a video coming soon that explains more about why I feel so optimistic about Rocket League. So let's just move on to number 10. And this I think is the biggest misconception. I see it quite a bit, especially in the YouTube comments uh, recently. And I really wanted to address and, and shut down this myth that is just spreading like a disease in the Rocket League community. And I've saved this for last because I'm actually pretty ashamed that this misconception is running so rampant. And that's that the Octane isn't the best car. Um, and my main point to debunk this is it is the best car. And uh, I don't think I need to say anything more about that. If you'd like to expand on any of my points or if I got anything wrong, make sure to let me know in the comments so my community can gang up on you and tell you why you're wrong. And if I pissed you off, well, you can go ahead and like and subscribe anyway, please. Just kidding. You can suck my octane. Or Ligma Christianos. See, I'm funny, guys.